Thank you, Ross. Uh, I'm going to share a short story with you uh, today. Uh, I was born in 1976 uh, to two wonderful people who were very excited to have me, but they were, no, uh, they were not aware of climate change, right? The world around them was beautiful. Uh, in fact, actually, eight years before I was born, the very first official paper was published, kind of giving us a hint into the future of what was coming. We didn't do anything about it. As humans, you know, business went about as usual, you know, 43 years from, from then. Uh, businesses thrive doing what they, what they do. And it has various implications. I wanted to show a couple of data points for you guys. Did you know that 52% of all known fishes in our oceans today are actually completely farmed out? They're extinct, right? 52% of all fishes. Soy, which is one of the crops that, of the 10 crops that feed 75% of our planet's calorie consumption, is actually coming from four countries. A lot of soil degradation is happening, and in fact, it's coming at the cost of the Amazon that you recently heard about. A lot of challenges. So let's look at, you know, 30 years from today, right? I'll be about 74 years old. My son will be roughly about 40 years old, right? How do we feed him and his peers? It's going to be about nine and a half billion people, right? We are about six and a half billion today. We'll be about nine and a half billion then. And the good news about all of this is that a lot of people are going to rise up in the social economical status, so which means that the calorie consumption is going up, right? With calorie consumption going up, protein consumption is going to go up, right? So where do we get all this food from? Again, in, in 30 years, as I said earlier, there are 10 crops that actually feed 75%. Only two of these crops are actually scalable to feed the 9.5 billion people of the world. What if I tell you that I came across a data point recently that the amount of food that we as humans need to produce for the next 30 years is equivalent to the amount of food that we have produced collectively for the last 8,000 years. That's the amount of food that we need to produce. And we don't have the amount, the land and the water, you've heard that throughout the day today, we don't have those resources. We don't have another planet. We have to do this in the existing planet. There is no plan B. This is it, right? We have to use what we have. That's where we come in. Uh, we are a biotechnology company. What we do is we take what the world does not need, which is methane gas, which is about 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide, and we convert it into different value-added products for different industries. Very simply put, what we do is we make next-generation proteins that are sustainable, that are traceable for all future value chains, no matter what the product is. Just a brief history about our company. Uh, we, we were started in 2013. Uh, we've been in stealth for a long time, till a couple of years ago. Uh, we developed the technology, as I said, it's a gas fermentation process. Uh, it's a fermented product, the protein is a fermented product. Uh, we've got our pilot plant set up in Bangalore today, and our first commercial plant is gonna come up next year. Along the way, we've got several awards, recognition, and we're humbled by it, both at the national and at the international levels. I want to leave you with one last data point. There is roughly about 500 million tons of methane gas that's escaping into the ozone layer today, right? So the way we have set up our plants is we're looking at you know, roughly leveraging 125,000 tons of methane, right? With 125,000 tons of methane, with our technology, we can actually make 100,000 tons of animal or bacterial protein. In common language, this is actually equivalent to recycling one million tons of waste, and I can actually feed 500 million tons of calories to mankind. Thank you very much. <laughs>